comes off. I have to use the battery, put the battery in. Okay, where are we going? Lions and tigers and bears. Oh my! Will we see Dorothy? Let's take a picture in here. We're in the jungle. Do you know where you are? What's the next? Do you know where you are? Take a picture. Take a picture. The tiger. I'm so confused. I'm so confused. Welcome to Django. There he is. Tiger. Tigger the tiger. Check out his habitat. <laughs> Got his shot. His crib. A nice crib. The tiger. Maybe from down there you can get a better And for his 16th birthday, you'll never believe it, but he actually got that car for his birthday. How about that? What a lucky sweet 16 for the big guy. And I think I'm just going to leave it there, but I do hope that you guys enjoyed this little tour of ours here today, and hopefully some of this will drive you home for the conservation efforts to help lead our fight moving forward. Now, when this tram makes a full and complete stop into the station here, you guys are more than welcome to open your own doors on the right-hand side of the tram only, where my colleagues and the people at the tram station are waiting patiently at. Just slide those black knobs forward down in and are up to open environments, whether it be the forest, the grasslands, the uh, deserts, even the rocky mountain cliffs like the Barbary sheep straight ahead of us. On top there, the tannish goat-like animals with large curving horns, some of the mountain climbers of the North African rocky uh, mountain habitats out there. Because all these different adaptations, how animals are able to thrive in any different environment, different landscape on that continent itself, is all because of the plants and the habitats and the environments in which they live in. These adaptations are all a reflection of that matter. So we do take pride in our efforts in regards to our plant conservation, habitat conservation efforts here at the park, whether it be establishing botanical gardens for different plant species, even restoring some of the native vegetation out here as well, because half of this safari park is actually a nature preserve for the local wildlife. And you can see the local wildlife in the surrounding hills out here, especially on your right-hand side of the tram. All this is local native vegetation that's untouched for that particular reason. So all these rhinos out here, these are southern white rhinos. Northern white rhinos are on the verge of extinction because there's only two of them left in the world right now at this very moment. So this is where we're using science and technology for because some of our southern white rhinos here at the safari park are going to act as potential surrogate mothers using the latest stem cell research and artificial insemination techniques. All the more of the reasons to help save the chubby unicorns from extinction as well. And in recent weeks, we actually have celebrated our 100th Southern White Rhino born here at the Safari Park um, as a result of that. So we are making some headlines in terms of that, and we hope to make a difference for conservation for the future as well. 
and especially when we can see beautiful southern white rhinos like those up on the hill. The giraffes just relaxing out here as well, getting, you know, an occasional treat from the ice cream truck right in front of us here, also known as a caravan truck, if anybody's wondering what a caravan safari looks like. And that is it. But all the all these beautiful sceneries, all the beautiful plants and animals is our way to inspire that next generation to encourage everybody here that visits here at the park that want to take action for animals and help continue our method of ending extinction for wildlife because after all taking action for conservation is as easy as a walk through the safari park here today anybody can do it no matter how old or young you may be all you do all you need is just that driving force to want to make a difference Dune's in a good mood right now because he's not putting on his camouflage, so it actually, he actually has a presence here today. But I apologize for his moodiness because he is a little bit down and out because Wednesday was seemed like only yesterday for him. Sorry, bad hump day joke and bad camel references. So I think I'm going to drive on ahead. Oh, look, more ostriches and a couple of baby giraffes up ahead. I'll distract you with them. Look at that. He's coming this so, way. This one walking along the dirt road right now is one of our youngsters. This is Yoda, a 10 month old baby giraffe. And if you're wondering, the spelling is different due to copyrights from Lucasfilms and Disney, but he is one of our youngest baby giraffes born out here at the safari park up to date. And so this is a good sign for conservation, at least for the majestic giants here today. Most of the food competition that comes from other antelopes or grazers like the Cape Buffalo, ostriches, and much, much more. But, unfortunately, giraffes are vulnerable to extinction due to the fact that in the last 30 years, we've seen a 40% decline in their wild populations out in Africa due to multiple reasons. But, one of our biggest conservation efforts is something that you guys can actually help us out with. By visiting our website, wildwatchkenya.org, you can act as a citizen scientist on our behalf, helping us to identify animals like giraffes, buffalo, elephants, rhinos, other antelopes from the camera photos, so we can get a good visual on the landscape and do figure out a conservation plan to help save them in the future. But we can also, in the process through that website, help other critically endangered animals, like the Somali wild ass that you'll see on your right hand yes. side of the tram. A wild horse species that's yes. native to some of the more dry, arid habitats of eastern Africa. We're very fortunate to have this herd because for the Somalis, there's less than 500 of them are still roaming out in their natural habitats today. So as a breeding facility, we help to boost those population numbers up, provide them a safe haven here at the park as well. Heroes for wildlife. Woohoo! So go ahead and give yourself a pat on the back, high five your neighbors for a job well done. Money well worth spent. So thank you guys for helping us to save the Thompson's gazelles, the flamingos, the crown cranes, the giraffes, and maybe a few of those chubby unicorns as well. Because it all goes back to helping to protect these animals, learn more about them each and every day, and use the best of our abilities to help find ways to inspire that next generation of passionate individuals that want to help to protect. Maybe say a dynamic cheetah dog duo over here or maybe even help to save the chubby unicorns from extinction. Because actually, that is exactly what we're doing right now here at the Safari Park as well. We're actually one of the leading breeding facilities in regards to saving chubby unicorns like those white rhinos. Over a century ago, the adults would be driving on any California freeway, uh, but they can only maintain that speed for roughly about 20 to 30 seconds. So not a whole lot of time out there. But as you saw, just very small and lanky looking compared to that of the big cats like lions, leopards, even hyenas. So they're very skittish by nature. That's why we have that dog alongside that cheetah. So that way that cheetah stays uh, cool as a cat as it is out here today. Now, if anybody want to learn more about our dog and cheetah companions out here at the safari park, I definitely recommend checking out the cheetah run later this afternoon right by that large yellow balloon you guys might have seen. Your buddies. Now we're gonna keep on driving ahead. Oh, Ignore cool. the large walking boulders on your left hand side of the tram. They're they're not really anything important or anything like that. <laughs> but if anybody really wanted to know, those are your rare yeah, the names on each of the check out the gorillas.
a wave tool and you think it's a wave back? Uh, well, we got flipped off once, so you never know. They flip you off? Yep. They scratch the butt and they smell it. Oh. You ever seen that? Mm. Look at this guy, he's just like a homie. Chilling. Munching on. Look at that. It's just. Is that bamboo? Can you explain that again? Why, why is the reason why you wouldn't uh, call them out? Because I don't have that privilege with them. And if they do respond, I don't have a positive reinforcement reward to give them. Oh. And I have no purpose for calling out their names for them to do something right. for them. Oh, okay. And, and that's how... You're used to the trainer's voice. You want them they to... They get very accustomed to the trainer's voice. They and Because we, they want, as I do, they want to be able to call out and um, so that they would respond immediately right. and they're not confused with all, someone that makes you know, sense. two or three sure. different voices calling out to them. Mm. So when they go in for the evening, yeah. Winston, the silverback, gets called. He has he, he goes in first. You yeah, always try to hit the branch. Yeah. 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 He's a pretty smart puppy. You know, they all are. They, they can figure it out. And so we give him enrichment um, at least twice a month to kind of keep the brain process stimulated. Uh, they can figure it out. This is uh, this is Leslie, our three-year-old, and okay, this is Joanne. Yeah, yeah, this is Joanne. Yep, she's Joanne knows that we're all looking at her. Of course, yeah. And I can tell you who they are, but I don't have the privilege to call out their names to, to, to recognize me. They recognize their keepers' voices, and they recognize their names when the keepers call them. Right. <laughs> That's a wrap. Thanks for watching.